This is Tony Cladera from the University of Dovalalek Islands and today I want to talk to you about the new shear provisions in the ACI code 318.19. Just one month ago it was released and as you probably know they have changed the shear provisions. This is a milestone for us, for researchers working on the shear strength because since the 60s probably the concrete contribution was something like two times a factor the, for light, lightweight aggregate concrete at the root of Fc prime times the web width and the effective depth. We have had this equation for more than I would say 50 years maybe but these equations had some safety concerns uh, for slabs with a low amount of longitudinal reinforcement and with a large and for large beams this equation was clearly unsafe so the new ACI provisions are that for members without a minimum amount of shear reinforcement the concrete contribution is eight times a size effect factor this is important the modification factor for lightweight concrete and FC prime then this is very important the influence of, of the longitudinal reinforcement the tensile longitudinal reinforcement you can write this here it's the same and this is all for uh, reinforced concrete without axial loads okay if you have axial loads you have to add here another term that it's additive so the main change is this size effect factor this is very important and the influence of the longitudinal reinforcement the size effect factor comes from the work carried out by professor Bazan and the committee ACI 446 and you can write it as something like this all of this of course with US customary units okay look this is very important because if you have um, a small member let's say d equal to 10 inches then uh, this factor is equal to 1 okay but if you have a larger beam let's say for example d equal to 60 inches then we have to calculate this we have the square root to 1 1 plus 60 over 10 and this is something like 0 0.53 okay so look uh, proportionally the shear strength is going to decrease by 50% okay from a small member to a, a larger beam and this was not included in the previous equation okay and then also this term it's important because this term here for slabs with a low amount of longitudinal reinforcement the shear strength is going to be lower okay in fact if we consider uh, let's consider a beam or a slab a slab with defective depth equal to 10 inches and a longitudinal amount of 1.5 percent okay so 0 0.015 then if we put this here the safe effect will be 1 so we have 8 times 0.15 one third this will be this equation becomes uh, 1.97 so practically 2 and the same we had earlier okay so for a slab with 1.5 percent of longitudinal reinforcement and with the effective depth of 10 inches and a small slab we have the same equation but if the increases and rho decreases this is quite normal 
then this equation would be unsafe. Uh, this is an important step. This equation is only for reinforced concrete, not for pre-stressed concrete. They have not changed that part of the code, but it's a first step. Okay, and I recommend you to read a new ACI paper published in a structural journal just this month, in July 2019, that explains very well how they have derived this equation and the concepts they had previously. Okay, and in that paper they explained that was a process in which six different groups of researchers from all over the world, we contributed presenting our proposals to update the code. Uh, this, code, this equation code comes from, let's say, the six different proposals uh, and uh, the business of use was very important. Two years ago, in the Concrete International Journal from September 2017, you will, have, you will find the different six proposals and you will, you will find the proposal published by Professor Marie, myself and other colleagues from the University of Balearic Islands and the Technical University of Catalonia that, pro that the proposal was that VC was equal to 6 a size and slenderness factor then the same lambda for lightweight aggregate concrete C over D and then the root of FC prime the effective width times D okay I will explain the difference and first I will to clean a little bit this and I explain you the difference between the two equations so, in this equation, the size and slenderness fa factor proposed was equal to, to this equation here, also der de derived from the work by Professor Bazan, the over 8 times, and here we had a factor like this, depending on the shear span. Okay, this is the ratio between the effective depth and the shear span. It looks different, but in fact, if we substitute here, for example, a typical A over D equal to 3.5, what one, one we can obtain here is, let's take that here, 1 over 3.5, we have here 1.557 the over 8 and this equation here and this equation here are practically the same okay you can make a graph with the two values and you will see for example for d equal to 10 10 inches let's write let's write here for 10 inches, this would be 1.557, 1 plus 10 over 8. This is 1.038, so it's only 4% difference. For 60 inches, if we calculate here, this would be for 60 inches, 0.53 so exactly the same okay so for small members there is a four percent difference for larger beams this equation here and this equation here are as just the same and then we have c over d okay so we have the size effect factor that is practically the same and c over d uh, i am going to explain you the effect of c over d in the next blackboard so we have just seen that, that this size effect factor and this size and slender factor are practically the same. And then I have to explain you what is C over D. This is the relative neutral axis depth or the neutral axis depth over the effective depth. Okay? Let's imagine that we have a 
reinforced concrete beam. And or on a slab, there's a light of, of on a slab. And we have some loads here. Then we'll have, of course, some flexural cracks. And then shear is maximum here. So we'll have a shear crack. The shear crack, what we have seen and many other authors develop in two different stages. First, it gets until here, this is C, okay, or in Europe, we call this X, and with an slope. And then it gets here inside the compression zone, much more horizontal, okay, until the failure, okay. So with C over D, we can, call, it's a parameter to control the depth of the or the different zones of the critical crack more vertical around 45 degrees or a little bit less and then more horizontal and c over d can be obtained from an elastic analysis and you know that c over d is equal to this equation here where N is the modular ratio, so it's the elastic modulus of the steel and the elastic modulus of the concrete, and rho is the amount of lo longitudinal reinforcement. Okay, rho, if we have here some longitudinal reinforcement, it's equal to the area of the longitudinal reinforcements over B over T. Okay. And this equation that is more or, more, more or less complex can be simplified this way. It is very similar if we draw both equations, the results are practically the same. We can see very easily with an Excel file. So, N, if we substitute here N, for example, a typical N, using the elastic modulus of concrete by ACI could be 7.5, then C over D can be simplified as 7.5 here to one third plus 75. So we have here 1.468, the amount of longitudinal reinforcement to one third. So right now look at this equation because C over D can be right this way. So our proposal that it must be understood that a possible model to give a mechanical interpretation to this new ACI equation but it's not exclusive. So there are other models that can also give you an interpretation but, but I think that this may help when we have something different. Look, now we have 1.468, six times, 8.8, then our size and the slenderness factor that we have seen that these two factors are equivalents, lambda for lightweight aggregate concrete, rho one third, Rho here to one third, Fc prime times D. So if you look here, this equation is just 10% safer than this equation, but they are practically the same. The size factor have the same values and we have here the same terms and the only difference is that for the ACI if you had a beam with a T cross section here this value here is the web width here and our model as it considers the strength 
in the compression part could have a bigger effective flange width that would be this value here. If you want to be safe and conservative, you could say that maybe F for a rectangular beam, it's always equal to the web width. And for a T-beam, this would be conservative. But this equation here gives you a physical explanation and allows you to do something else. For example, if you want to consider the, the compression flange and how it helps you for the shear strength, you can take this value here. Okay? You can go to, our, to one of our papers and obtain this value here. If you have beams reinforced with FRP, in which the modus of elasticity changes a lot, then you can, you can change here N and go back here, and you will, you will find a slightly different equation. Okay, but both equations are um, give very similar results, being ACI 318, 19, uh, a little bit more conservative. Okay, just to finish, I hope this short video is useful for you. And um, please do not consider that this is the parent equation for, for the ACI new proposal. It is not. Uh, this is a possible interpretation. And we really think that it can be useful when you have different problems and you want to work with um, different beams. Other possibility is that this parameter, C over D, that we have here, C over D, can change when we have axial forces or prestress forces or tensile loads. Okay? If you have prestressing, then C increases and you have more strength, more shear strength. And if you have axial tensile loads, then C will decrease, okay? Then C will decrease and you will have a lower shear strength. Thank you very much for your attention and I invite you to see other videos in this YouTube channel, but most of them are in Spanish. Thank you very much.